It's also live podcast, baby. Most authentic, most organic podcast out here. Let's go. Mi gente, creo que nos fuimos a Tulum. Hicimos un viaje. Good. I think so. Ruben, are we in Tulum? Yeah. Man. <laughs> Riverside Tulum. Yeah. Riverside so Tulum. <laughs> For everybody wondering, we are in the middle, inside I Meet By Restaurant with the one and only Mr. Ruben. Let's go. Thank you guys. ¿Cómo andas? Al millón. Uh, al millón y pasadito. Always. <laughs> but, I, but I always say, nunca al cien. That's average. Al millón es because you're a little... Your old cherry on top, you're more. Oh, ah, I millón. like that. Mm. I like millón. that. Hasta el millón. Yeah, yeah. Man, talk to us. Where where are we? What is this? What is this amazing location? Uh, we're we're here in Riverside. Uh, pretty much got inspired by, you know, like the Mexico. You know, Mexico is beautiful. When you go to Mexico, you try to, how you say it, uh, disconnect of reality. Or you go to Tulum, you disconnect. It's like yeah. a dinner experience where you party, you eat, you drink, and you and you have fun. Right? Yeah. It's a dinner experience that I seen over there, like, man, we need this in Riverside. We need this in, you know, United States. So, brought it here, you know, the experience of dining and entertainment at the same time is like at a different level. And the best part is that now I'm on, like, I'm in partnership with malls. You know, before they didn't believe in, they didn't believe in like live music or DJs. You know, they yeah. thought, mm -hmm. oh, classy restaurants and just have a steak and go home. Like, no, that doesn't, that doesn't work no more. You know, you need the entertainment yeah. to go with it. And the new generation of people want that. And that's what we're giving to the new generation. Queremos, el, am awesome. queremos el ambiente. Eh, right? Yo creo que es. Puro party. Puro party. Puro party. Puro party. Uno que dice, nomás voy algo calmadillo. Y luego de repente, ahí vienen las botellas. Ahí it's, vienen los it's shots. It's not our fault, right? It's not our fault. It's, it's the atmosphere. It, it brings out another animal in us sometimes. It just gets you going. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like, and I see it too, you know, I'm, I'm, a, night, I'm a nightclub guy too. I like mm -hmm. one of nightclubs, you know, and I think it's, It's hard for people just to go to nightclubs now. You know, it's better to have nightclubs don't get busy 11 to 12 or 1, you know. And, you know, in the dinner experience, you have the dinner where people have a dinner reservation at 7 or 8. You dine, mm. you eat, and then what? You party, you stay, yeah. and you yeah. vibe with everybody. That's so you have awesome. the whole package. Yeah. That's yeah. what I try to bring to everybody here. Great music, awesome. great vibes, great drinks, great food. Uno se queda, what, average two or three hours at least? At least two or three hours, yeah. ¿Qué más quieren? Two, three hours, yeah. ¿Qué yeah. más quieren? ¿Qué más quieren? Mira, después de aquí ya nos vamos a la casa, descansamos, pero primero party. Primero party, yeah. What, what does the sign say? No pasa nada. No pasa, no pasa nada. nada. No pasa nada. We've been saying that. Man, so how do, you, how do you come up with this idea, like, I need to bring Tulum here? Like, is it something, a cumulative of ideas from other restaurants? Is it cumulative of your lifestyle, of places you've been to, like... You know what? It's a little bit of everything. Mm. Lifestyle, too, first of all, you know, because I tell myself, how do I want to go eat and, and drink? You know, what do I want? You know, because I'm like, any, I like everybody. Like, I'm not going to go to a steakhouse and just eat, you know. And, you know, I like the fine, fine dining, but I like the entertainment at the same time. Yeah. You know, I like to party. Who doesn't like to party? <laughs> right? Eh, we like to party. <laughs> right? After 9 p.m., cameras turn off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. So I bring it, I combined everything together to say, you know what, let's bring a little bit of everything and put it into one. And that's what I brought, what the ideas I have, how I like to have it, you know. And I also bring like the, the VAP treatment to the next level. So I have cavas. So if you own a, you own a liquor, I mean a cava, you know, you're a VAP. So pretty much we have a party bus, brand new Sprinter Mercedes. You call me, hey, you know what, Ruben? Pick me up at eight. Go to your house, pick you up in the party bus, bring you here. You walk right straight to your table. You have bottles of bottles. I'll give you your, my 1942, my class of soup. Put it to your table. You drink, you party, you eat, you have fun. We'll take you back home. Wow. The that's VAP good. experience. You don't have a phone number. You have the VAP number. You have the manager number. You have a VAP yeah. number. So you call that number direct. So you, because, you know, I'm blessed to say we're always busy in the weekends. You know, That's so amazing. You skip everything and you just come straight in. That's. Can we say how much is it? Is that VIP experience? 
But depends on your pocket. So the cava, oh. the cava, oh. okay, all right. So the cava, the cava is but worth. Got it. They're two thousand five hundred to like ten thousand. I have a cava back there. It's probably worth like fifty thousand dollars. Oh my god, yeah, good customers, you know. Think hey, five, five. Do, right? We got thirty dollars. <laughs> we can put in, bro. You know, but dude, it's funny because it's like uh, they like there's a there's cavas and there's like sections and it's, it's like uh, real estate, you know, mm. here mm-hmm. and you want they want to have it the best real estate. You have your plaque, you put your hat, your company, you know, and it's promotion, you know, you advertise, you know, mm. but it's funny. It's, it's a blessing how it works and people love it. And do I have a line out the door? I have a, uh, probably like no cabas available and I, what, have like a list of 20, 30 people trying to get one, wow. you know, and I have nothing to give. You know? That's Let's give that experience. So did you ever think that you would get to this? Making cabas when you started your business? I think when you start a business, you have to, I can picture in your mind you know like he has an idea already right yeah you guys have your ideas and i pretty much role play in my head okay is it gonna work right of course there's always like a that like, oh my god what if it doesn't work but if you're so confident and say you know what it's gonna make it work you work your a- your ass off to say you know what's gonna work you role play it i had my expectations and i worked so hard that i overachieved that i was so satisfied i'm like oh my god you know, to the level where I say, okay, I got to keep going. You know, I, I don't want to let loose. You know, every day, you know, I, I, what new ideas can I bring in? You know, how can I make the experience better for my customers? You know, also my employees. I love my employees. My employees don't leave me. And how can I make their life easier and grow with me? You know, I have a little group. I have like 300 employees. And then out of the 300, I have like 10 that are on my jefe group. My jefe is like my little circle. And when I work with and say, you know what? You're my heifer group, brother. You know what? Next store I open, you could be my partner. You can be an invest. You can be my partner, operator. Oh, Pretty much, sad. you give me. A, you know, I don't need. I don't need a lot of money. The money part, I don't need it. I just need your your energy. Because I know these people, the ones I have heifer group, I have. I can name them. Dude, they're amazing people. Mm-hmm. They work their ass off, and they're hungry. You know, mm-hmm. and I, I feel like they're coachable and they really want to grow with me. Yeah. So I work with those people. To make my life easier and make their life easier too. Mm. So it's a win-win for both of us. That's awesome. Wow. That's so what traits do you think are required to be a jefe? A jefe? I'm going to yeah. push this a little back for you. Thank you. Passion, discipline, and willing to just, you know, give it all you have, you know, because <clears throat> they, the ones that have their jefe, they also have, uh, like, they always are not afraid to give me ideas. To talk to me and say, hey, we're going to have mm. this idea, have this idea. Mm-hmm. Not there just you know. wait for... The things that happen, no, they're like, hey, bro, what do you think about this? Yeah. They'll text me in, like, hey, Ruben, what about this? Hey, I have an idea. You know, and not all ideas are great. And I've never, like, like bring them down with a stupid idea. Like, dude, you're, it doesn't matter. Yeah. That stupid idea could be a great idea. Yeah. You just keep giving me ideas. Yeah. So you gotta see what else can. We have some badass ideas. I have some shit <laughs> coming out, man. It's, it's, oh, my God. I, I'm, like, excited. I'm, yeah. Dude, I, what, woke up? Well, I took, what, two hour, two hour nap? I didn't sleep. <laughs> you know, I work. That's kind of how it goes. And I got here, you know, I love what I do. My job is, and they love what they do too. Yeah. You know, I, one of my bartenders, he was here last night too, too. Like, what, one in the morning? He's here already, eight in the morning. Nine in the morning, he's here working. And with a smile on his face, see his energy, how happy he is to be here? Yeah. You know, so that's, that's what I, you that's have what to, I appreciate. Yeah. You, know? you have to build a team that's like-minded. Like, hey, we know what our goal is. We know what we need to do. And is it a lot of work? Yeah, of course. Anything that you're going to build takes a lot of work. Sleepless nights. You're gonna sacrifice your mental health. You're gonna sacrifice your sleep, your your physical, because yeah. you're mm-hmm. just on the go. And when your people, like everybody in this room, you know, you're not, you don't settle for the bare minimum. Or lo, lo que lo van a dar. Mm-hmm. We're here for. I want this and I want more. Yeah. I want what's mine, but I know what I need to take. Yeah. And building a team. I mean, how you said you have ten ten in your group. How do you go about? <sighs> How do you maneuver when you get let down or disappointed? Have, have you been let oh, down or disappointed yeah. it's gonna throughout your journey? It's going to happen. But me, as, you know, as a leader and the founder, you know, you, I had to set the examples. You, know, you sit down with people, you motivate, you work with them. I, mm. had, I had my best guy, my, my right-hand man, is fully an alcoholic. Full-blown alcoholic. <laughs> Crashed. Two of his cars in one month. Right. I still I seen I seen his qualities. I was like, man, this guy is still he's shit. I got to work with him. I got to just help him because we all have issues. None of us. Nobody here is perfect. I'm not perfect at all. That guy literally 
Dude, that guy, I love that guy. I'll do anything for him. He's been with me for 15 years, right? Mm. Crashed his car twice, alcoholic. Like, hey, bro, we always got an argument, fighting, almost to, like throw blows. Mm-hmm. Hey, bro, get the pasa. Livianate. What's wrong with yeah. you? You know, you're, you have, you're a great employee. You're great. That was back 12 years ago, 10 years ago. Yeah. Now, he don't drink. Drinks all duels. He makes over 100 grand a year. I just gave him partnership for two restaurants. I'm opening some fast food uh, smash burger restaurants. Hey, bro, you know what? You, I got offered them to me. I said, you know, brother, you own them. And I'm going to show you how to make money. You're going to make money with me. You're going to make money there for free. I said, you own it. And I'm going to buy him a house this year. He's going to have his own house. He's an immigrant. Got him at Home Depot, brother. Wow. Got him at Home Depot. What moving my first world. restaurant. When I shut down my first round, I moved my restaurant over there. Home Depot. Best guy runs my kitchen. I have a kitchen commissary. Runs my whole kitchen. Never calls me to bug me. Always come up with a solution. If he calls me, it's for something. I know it's a big deal, right? Yeah. But he always comes up and fixes every issue. You know, so, yeah, like I'm telling you, That's you're saying awesome. it's for people. It's hard. You know, trust me, yes. they're not perfect. But depends on the leader on making them even better. That's really, that, those are really good crit like quality traits to have as a leader because not everybody can just be a good leader. Do you think that there, like what happened in your journey that got you to this point? Because not all bosses think the way you do. Oh, I fell so much. Mm. I've been going backwards so much. I fell down so much. I've been broke so much that you go through all this and you're like, I understand him. I used to drink too. You know, I, I hit, you, people hit rock bottom. Yeah. But it's how you get up and you keep moving forward, plain and simple. And I've been through what he did, went, what he went through, you know. Um, I know the, I know how hard it is sometimes, the pressure, what you go through, you know, not making money, not paying your rent on time, your bills, you know, and just like a roller coaster, yeah. right? And thank God I had a good, strong dad. Who whooped my ass, you know what I mean? Like, you mm-hmm. know? Um, but a lot of people don't have that. You know, yeah. he doesn't have father figure. He doesn't have no one to go to. So you always need that person to be, like, over that shadow, you know? Yeah, someone to, like, like you said, having a role model is just super important. Like, someone que, si te mira la, que la estás cagando, te va a decir, hey, wey, hazlo, que estás haciendo, what yeah. are you doing? Mm-hmm. And honestly, I've always, again, your environment, who you're surrounding yourself with is who you're going to be. So if I'm around people that, you know, wake up early, that want to be better, they want to want to do better, working towards something, mm-hmm. all right, cool. Because I've been around those groups that, hey, what are we doing this weekend? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, fuck, let's go to Livianatelos. Mm-hmm. Come Monday, we're like, fuck, I hate my job. I hate what I'm doing. I'm fucking barely making it. Now it's like, hey, what are we doing for this week? How can we build from Monday to Friday? We reset on the weekend. How can we keep it going? And, again, it takes people to hold you accountable. Yeah. If I didn't have people to, like, they're, if I'm wrong about something, they come at me like, ah, look, I know you hate to hear it, but the way they see I'm like, fuck. Because I hate it. Because I, I I love to be in control, but there's cer- certain things in life that are just not in our control anymore. Yeah. I can't make him want it more than I than he does. So if I've been around friends that, and people that, you know, they use excuses. Oh, yeah. You know, we're everybody's time is getting passing by. We're getting older. There's only so much at a certain point where you can be like, well, because of my friends, my dad, my mom, because this happened to me. Me dejó la novia, el novio. It is what it is, bro. We all have problems. All of us. Hey, all of us. So when you were broke, what's that mentality? Because, uh, you know, I, to... How do I get unbroke? How do you get... What's that mentality? Because when you... Again, when you're zero dollars in your account, you don't know how you're going to make rent, your car payment, take care of your family, there has to be either a point where either you switch it and you're like, la, la tengo que chingar, yeah. or... Fuck it, it is what it is. You I know, lost. Back to the back to the grinding board. You know what I mean? Waking up early in the morning, say, okay, fuck. My goal was always, okay, I gotta make payroll. I gotta make sure I pay my bills. Like me right now, I'm like, fuck. I'm good. You know, <laughs> yeah. I can whatever I can I'll figure it out myself. But make payroll, pay my employees. You know, yeah. I just my my heart was always been like, I gotta pay my fucking employees. You know, that's that's it. And I have to wake up early, figure it out, and yeah. figure it out, and figure it out. People that own restaurant businesses, especially restaurants, the hardest thing. Dude, you know how hard it is to get a loan for a restaurant? The bank sees you at the bottom because it's the most riskiest business to have and to invest in. Risky, mm-hmm. the margins, but not my business. You know, all due respect, I, I had my taquerias in the beginning. You know, they make you, they're busy, but you don't make money, you know, selling tacos for $2. You, yeah. you don't, $1.50, yeah. you don't. It's not going to work. 
but I do make money selling the dinner experience. Tell you that. People buying Cava's bottles experience, you know, people have fun. Yeah. There's bigger margins, you know, so, way bigger margins. That's interesting that you say that. Yeah. The banks see you at, as the bottom. Like, you're the, you're the risk that we probably don't want to take. Correct. What's the capital or what's, what's the business plan that you have to, when you go to a bank, to open a restaurant? Like, what are the, what are the things that you need in order to, hey, I'm going to open one? Oh, you, uh, need, you need to show your good numbers. Mm -hmm. You got to show high profit margins. You got to show numbers that, you know, that there's money, you know, there's revenue coming in. And, man, I could tell you here now, last year we did 8.5. That is crazy. That's well, amazing. Long, so. At a, at a 5,000 square foot, right? At a, I'm a, at my competitor across the next door. They're 10,000 square feet. They did, they did 11 million. But I'm half the size. Per square footage, I'm killing them. That's crazy. Or I'm killing them, you know? That's I just, awesome. I just right now, just left Bakersfield <laughs> this morning. Yeah. Had a line outside out the door. Oh, my God, I'm so blessed. I had a line out the door for like three hours. You know, I'm going to hit nine million over there in revenue. God. So now That's I'm like, awesome. dude. And now I have, you know, it's a blessing before. I couldn't find, no one would give me the opportunity. Hey, I want to open a restaurant. Look at my paperwork. No, denied. 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 Right? And I will try to get these locations. Hey, I want to open a bigger restaurant. No, denied. Denied. Uh, now, wow, I can tell you people are begging me. So what changed? Begging me. Change? Yeah, what changed? Uh, I just, I, I, you know, I, I hit a gold mine with, with this store, you know, with this with this concept, it's different. You know, it's not, it's not the same. Mm -hmm. And now I, I'm a proven concept, you know. Just, I'm like, I'm gonna, it's just uh, Thursday, no, Wednesday. Oh, my God, I got offered $4 million to open an IMIPA. And these people are begging me. Damn. I'm like, That's fuck. crazy. And you but know what's crazy? I'm still not insane. like, I'm, of course, you know, I'm, an, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm blessed to, mm -hmm. to hear those numbers from those people, you know. But at the same time, I'm like, wow, you know, it's both like, what do I do? You know, like, fuck, it's good, you know, but it's a blessing. And, you know, it's just, it, it took me all what I did, the suffering, yeah. to figure it out. You know, you're not going to get it in one year, two years, five years. You got to keep it grinding. Like, and, I, and I love what I do. And that's a good thing. I tell you, I love, yeah. I wake up in the morning. Yeah. It's, it's different. So for someone to wake up early in the morning to have, and have a smile on their face, the energy, and again, it, if you build something with great frequency, great environment, great people around, people are going to want to be a part of it. Yeah. If you come in and everybody's kind of like hating their life and fucking giving a shit face, it's like, I don't think I want to go back there. But again, it, it takes a great leader. It takes a great set of uh, a team. And if you have all that together, how can you lose? Yeah. You know what I mean? My leader's no losing. As long as you, you know, you're disciplined. And there's a lot of dedication to what you do, and you have passion. Yeah. Like, I, th I feel like you guys have passion for what you guys do. Being but, here early in the morning, what yeah. are you guys doing? Man, good for you guys. <laughs> there's, maybe you can agree to this. If you do something for free for a year, two years, you have to have an attachment to it. Yeah. Like, when people are like, oh, bro, you've been doing it that long? Oh, you must love it, hon. I'm like, well, I did that shit for free for about two, <laughs> two and a half years, bro, before even a dollar back. Yeah. Now it's different. Now it's this is my attachment because yeah. for so long I've always felt like, if I quit now, what are they going to say? Oh, you see, he started something and he quit. You quit, yeah. And it, it was never going to work. It, it didn't out, work yeah. out. And you know what? You had those people. Sometimes they're the, the closest. And you know, and you, yeah, they're always the closest. <laughs> yeah. And you, you know what? I appreciate those people. Yeah. Because that's what makes you think, like, you know what? Let's prove them wrong. I opened my first restaurant. My closest people will be like, oh, it's going gonna, gonna to last six months. No, he mm. said three months. And three months came, come in and go, oh, it's going to last six months. And I last six months. And then they go, oh, it was going to last only a year. And it lasts a year. Like I'm year 12 right now. What's up? You know, I'm, I'm still grinding. Yeah. You know, and that person around me, I sometimes I like throwing it in his face in a, in a respectful way. Hey, I sold this much. Mm -hmm. What? I sold this much. Yeah. That's awesome. And, uh, it, but it's, you got to use it as a positive, not as a negative. When people talk about you or have no faith in what you're going to do, yeah. use it as energy. Use it as fuel. Say, you know what? Let's prove them wrong. Yeah. And appreciate them later because, you know, they're going to help you. They're pretty much helping you because you need those bad comments. Yes. You need those yep. neg people, negative people. To talk about you, yeah. to make you better, yeah, to put just, you on your toes. No matter it's, no matter what you do, people are gonna always say something. Yeah, absolutely. It's amazing to hear your success in everything that you're doing throughout your entire career. Is there something that you wish you would have learned earlier on? 
that you maybe learned later oh, that course. contribute to oh, your yes. success? Of course, yes. Yeah, of course. A lot of things. I a mean. lot of things. <laughs> oh, give, us, give us a good one. Oh, okay, what could it be? Um, it could be a lot of things, you know, how to cut costs, um, what business to open, you know, because people do take a lot of risks, you know. I, I remember I opened a flower shop. I lost that shit. I lost 20 grand. Uh, I invested in, you know, and like certain partners were, you know, went bad, you know, and not doing paperwork correctly. And sometimes you get so excited about everything. You say, you know, what, just, 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 just do it, you know, yeah. and it's like, and then further years go on a year or two years go on. It gets more difficult, you know, when you don't have control, you know, yeah. that's one of the biggest mistakes. And I'm still suffering, not suffering, but it's just hard to communicate. You know what I mean? And now I do things different where I want to have the torch and I want to have control. I have, I have partners. But I always ha want to have the torch and make sure I do. I run the business how I want to run it. And no one's holding me back. That's the that's the part, you know. You have no restrictions. No restrictions. Yeah. It's, it's cause, what do we say? Like, when you have the creativity, like, you need that freedom. Yeah. When you have that vision. No one, you, it can't be duplicated by somebody else. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a different one and, you know, power to you. But when we know, I know this is going to work. I just don't know when, but I know it's going to work. Mm -hmm. And then, again, to some people, it may be fucking crazy. It may be like, oh, you're going to open it there? Are you serious? Oh, that's not going to work. That's what they told me in Bakersfield. That's what they told me here. Yeah. So, oh, you can open Riverside. That, that, this place, uh, I think, lost three previous restaurants Ooh. like in the last five years. And everybody was like, oh, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's like, bro, everybody's failed. And they didn't like the name. I remember I, had an inv I told them, hey, invest in Aimee Pa. He goes, the name Aimee Pa. He goes, you change the name, I'll invest. I'm like, I'm not changing the name because I have a visionary. It's like, this name is fucking Wait, Can badass. we say, where did, this came, where did this come from? Okay, so. <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> you know, everybody interested, yeah. where does I meet Pa come? So, everybody calls me Pa, P-A, especially my son. Calls me Pa, Pa, when he was little. You know, and I call my dad, hey, Pa. You know, so my dad and I had that name, Pa. You know, mm -hmm. so, and pretty much, like, hey, what do you name this restaurant? You know, and I meet Pa came out, like, dude, that's. Yeah, I mean, pa, like, pa, I mean, pa, you know. Yeah. And unfortunately, my dad passed away. He's going to hear a crazy story. I'm not trying not to cry, right? But one month prior, you want to know difficulty? One month before I opened this store, my dad co-signed for me. He passed away. My rock, my, my leader, my mentor, my superhero passed away for like, oh, my God. I'm like, fuck, how am I going to do this? I had no guidance. He kept, he kept me on my toes. My dad could wake me, wake me up every morning, 6.37, on tas. Chingale. On ta, que once hora. Push me. Boom, boom. Every, I had everything. Like, he would line me up. I would line him up. He will line me up. Fitness, guys. My dad was skinny, biceps, triceps. Yeah. Chulo. Superhero. He's my superhero. He was my superman, right? So, one month prior to opening, passed away. Fucking just shocked. I could see him here every day. Picking up. Kitchen equipment, doing this. Hey, the tree, doing the flooring. Hey, we're going to do this. Yes. Yeah, I'm fucking motivated. Oh. Come back one month. I hit a depression. One month. Say one month. I'm drinking every day. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck? And I have that. Because my dad would see me drink. He's like, what are you doing, What are you And you're know, like, oh, now we're Okay, you're right. What the fuck am I doing? I got to, you know, got to sharpen up. Right? You had that. I had, that's my dad. That was for me. Yeah. So I had a shot. I had like, okay, I got to shape up. Let's go. Got to open. You know, that was fucking difficult. Burying my father and opening this at the same time Damn. and knowing I had to become successful. But I use it as fuel again. I use it as, okay, now I am not going to fail him. He's still alive in my head. He's, he's, a, he's a wild. Like, I, I'm going to live his legacy and, and I'm going to tell people his legacy and, and, and learn his way and live his way, you know? Do you think now, tell. like with... Being open, the success you have, like, like, what do you think your dad would tell you? Oh, like, that's chingon. That's chingon. That's muy chingon todo. And yesterday I was talking to myself. I always talk to myself, like, I'm not, I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm talking, but talk me, I'm just talking to him. So what do you tell him? him? I tell my dad, because my dad would like numbers. My dad would like, ¿cuánto bendito, mijo? That's the first thing he would call me right now in the morning, ¿cuánto bendito? <laughs> and I would tell him, está chingon. Ah, que chingon, mijo, muy bien. You know what I mean? Like, fuck. So I talked to him, you know. And I, and I, I always tell him, thank you. So he's, you know, my dad was a strict Latino. Mm -hmm. I just remember, he said, well, my ass. Two months, um, two months before we were passing away, we're joking in the office. Hey, dad, remember you whooped my ass so bad I didn't go to school for a week? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, no, mijo, no te pegue tan duro. I says, yeah. 
I remember, but you know what I told him? Hey, thank you, bro. Maybe yeah. I needed it. Yeah. And he's like, okay. And I'm like, cool. But yeah, I remember he fucking, literally, you know, strong Latino. And he was always on my ass. I'm like, why just me? Why are you on the other brother's sister? You're always on me. But now I know why. Because he's seen that I, I'm not trying to say, but my other brothers are successful too, but he always seen something in me like, hey, you have something special. Yeah. You know, I'm like, dude, you're right. So do you think he'd be proud of you right now? Oh, fuck yeah. Really proud. Yeah. yeah. Are yeah. you proud of yourself? Oh, yeah. Extremely proud. Yeah. Great father. No tattoos. One tattoo of my, my dad's signature. His signature right here is what he signed to get me my first I Me Pa right here. Wow. I told him to co-sign for me because I couldn't get it by myself. I needed to get a, a grand tour that had more equity, more assets, and that was my father. And I told my dad, I said, Dad, if you don't want to sign, don't sign. But this is my vision. And, and he went with me to, to Mexico, to Tulum, and he s- experienced everything, you know? <laughs> and the vision thing. we had, he was like, no, mijo, va a estar chingo esta madre. He even told me, like, hey, va a estar lleno. Va a tener mucha gente. Fácil. What do I sign? And that's, he's putting his liabilities to risk, you know, his assets, yeah. you know, his house and everything. So I'll, I'll co-sign for you. And, you know, it's crazy. I don't need, that's what I don't need it no more, but I don't need it no more. I don't need my last signature. For Bakersfield, now it's just my signature. For Ontario, my signature. The L.A., my signature, you know, but he gave me, before he passed away, this, you know. That's now, awesome. I tell myself, I'm not going to fail him. Can't fail him. I'm not going to awesome. fail him. You, know? well, you, have the, you have that, that be- your parents' belief behind you, and, you know, that sometimes that's all you need, man. That, yeah, you know, cheers to that, bro. Yeah, cheers, cheers to that. that. Cheers to that. Cheers, 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 cheers. A toast. 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 Woo. Ooh, I'm sipping. <laughs> Mm, that's nice. That's oh. the nice. What do you think, Jose? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> that's good. For people, like, always tell us, like, oh, like, your videos are always sad. I'm like, bro, it's because it's just so relatable. Yeah, like, it, it, it's well, I heard one of your podcasts. Yeah. You, you talked about, I think it was your grandpa. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. passed away. You rock. That was yeah. the one that hold everybody together. That was my father. Yeah. And now everything before every my dad was alive, it was like, okay, every Sunday was... My dad's house. And my dad would just, you know, he, my dad didn't drink. He was, he, was, uh, he was sober like 30 years. Wow. But we're all, you know, my brothers are all, we like to drink. We like yeah. to party. Yeah. And they fuck. What the fuck? Yeah. And he didn't like that. So what he would do, he would buy us all bottles. <laughs> he would buy, he would go to Costco yeah. and get the 175. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great Goose is just to make sure that we went home. Like, hey, we yeah. went to drink with them. <laughs> ah, la agua, la agua. <laughs> you know, to to what you had said, um, you know what? Sometimes one of your parent, your dad, or your mom is hard on one on one child, on one son, or one daughter. But I've said this before: like that one parent that is that one child that's you know getting kind of no no quiero decir maltrato, but like living a harder life. It's because your parent knows you you can withhold that that you can yeah. withstand that porque te miran algo that no one else sees like ese es mi mijo ese es mi hija like I know you guys can do better and do more like you can have five brothers and sisters but there's that one that just changes changes the world changes the outcome the the family lineage like yeah. it's insane like at that time we may not understand it and it's sometimes it's really hard because he's like why me why not him why not her like yeah. why only me but years come you grow up you're mature and you, you look back, and like, especially now, like, you look back and, like, wow. Yeah. You know, it's funny how you said to your dad, like, ¿Cuánto hicimos? ¿Cuánto hiciste? Because mm-hmm. that's the first thing, like, my dad says, he's like, ¿Cómo te va? I'm like, bien. It's ¿Cuánto haces? ¿Cuánto haces? Mm-hmm. Um, so I just show him, like, look, you know, me va bien. Mm-hmm. This is mi hijo. That's it. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't quit because he built something. Mm-hmm. And in my eyes, in my, you know, I, I'm sure everybody else feels this way. The one thing I, the one person, the two people I want to make proud of it Prince. is my parents, yeah. man. Like, the, the tantos putazos yeah. que se dieron, yeah. all that esfuerzo que se dieron, yeah. and all that, yeah. all that time they spent, all that money, all that, whether they give us the last chicken nugget that they had, bro, mm-hmm. like, you know what else? What can we do? Who are, uh, who are we to say, I can't be successful in this world? We have so much opportunity. Oh, there's yeah. so much, there's so much room for success. Like, you know, if one thing, when I, when I leave, it's like, I hope I made my dad proud. I hope I made my mom proud. Yeah. Other than that, I can care less about everybody else respectfully. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's because un orgullo es when your parent, you hear your parent talk about 
you to other people. I mean, my dad was really like <laughs> cold, but it felt good to get the truth out of him. He'll be like, he'll tell you. Before I used to be like 280 pounds, I was big, right? And he'll tell me, I'm like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> like, that truth, man. The truth. And speaking. I remember I say, I'm going to diet. And he would like, he would never tell you, good for you. And he go, ha, I'm going to diet. And he was like, fuck. Yeah. And he tortured me. I'm like, oh, for two weeks. This last five pounds. Nah, you wouldn't be proud. Um, I did a 75 heart challenge. You heard that one? Oh, yeah. We were just talking about it. We were just talking about it. Bro, I have my pictures. You'll trip out. I was skinnier than now, right? But, and this is probably two months prior to me passing away. It's crazy. So, like, you know, I did 75 heart. Day 15, he, was, he wasn't proud. Day 20, Nothing. Wow. I like day 60, day 55. I remember I took my shirt in. And for the first time, I'm <laughs> <laughs> fajado. And that's one thing. My dad, my dad was in fajado. He wore his nice Ted uh, Bakers and Louis Vuitton shoes to work. His, no, Ferragamos to work. And I'm like, damn, dad, you're too bougie. I got my dad to be bougie. <laughs> Love to see it. That was my goal. I was like, you know, I'm my dad bougie. And he was bougie. I'm like, dad, at the night, because my dad's Latino. He was always wearing the same pants all week. I took, took my dad to Nordstrom. I said, dad, you got to. I said, Dad, you've been working all your life. The Stop Levi's, saving money. The go shirts. buy. Shirt. Go yeah, shop. Go treat yourself yeah. a lot. So I, mm -hmm. he got someone to measure his arm ah. length, his pants, and everything. And when he, I said, That's, he, and he, my dad's fit. Yeah. He's a very fit, fit mm -hmm. man. Yeah. And he wears clothes and like, right? I'm like, okay, how much is it? I said, don't worry about it. Said, Fucking let the business pay for it. He's keeping, you know. And then, and fuck, you see his closet. <laughs> like, Mambo's freaking badass suits and all that. And he, man, he deserved it. I said, Dad, you got to spend money, Dad. I said, you worked all your life. All your life yeah. to worry about us. Don't worry about me. Yeah. This is your money is your money. Because he has his business too, right? Mm -hmm. I said, you, that's you, you spend it. Yeah. Three months prior to passing, two months prior to passing away, I said, Dad, we got, you got to get a car. You know, his restaurant was so busy. I was like, you got to go buy another car. You know, just... Just put it at the business to pay for it or tax deduction. And I'm like, oh, pues que compro. I said, let's go to a Mercedes dealership. Let's get an S-Class Mercedes. A nice S-Class like S -class Mercedes. Ah, neta. I was like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> I remember, I was like, hey, S-Class. You know, they're like, oh, $150,000 cars? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, ¿cuál quieres? Ah, tú escógelo. He was nervous. I'm like, no, bro, let's fucking you pick it. What do you want? Said, yeah. And we got the three cars. We test drove it. I drove it. He didn't want to drive it. <laughs> and then once I drove it, it was too much <laughs> for him. Yeah. You know, for a, you know, my dad's yeah. like a Mexican as in B. Right? Yeah. Got on the freaking, I picked the Mercedes. Nice. Matte black. Nice S-Class. Drives on its own. You know, does like the auto drive and all that stuff. Dude, I remember he was showing it off. Came here, like, going to the South Coast every week. You know, I'm like, damn. <laughs> but I'm like, and then I told him, I got him my Amex. I said, you swipe this shit. Have fun. Swipe you know? it. Now, you know, that's something I don't regret. Like, you? Yeah. You sell your parents, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're working your ass off. You know, give something back to your parents. And that's what I, that's one thing that I can tell when my dad passed away, you know, and I'm proud that I gave him like a better life. I gave him the opportunity to live life without stress. You know, I get him out of work because my dad always try to work. I know that let your business run. It's, we're going to create a system. Yeah, it's because then parents, our parents are, you know, my dad has his business too. And they don't, they don't know what rest is. They don't, they don't, know. They don't know what treat yourself is. No? It's crazy that you're saying that about like your dad buying the car because my dad, his work trucks, all brand new. The año. The one thing he would drive was a 2012 Yukon. Untouchable. Had less than 100,000. Because <laughs> he would always drive the work truck. He's like, no, yo estoy a gusto. And we, I was like, hey, dude, like, ya, ya es tiempo. Yeah. I was like, ya es tiempo. And he was like, no, no quiero. And I was like, dad. And I was like, everything's paid off. You have nothing no to pay. Yeah. Go treat yourself. So we, the same thing. We went to the dealership, to the Yukon. And he was like, tu manejala. I was like, you're buying it, not me. He's like, no, no, tu manejala. Okay. Right. And I was like, te gusta? And he was like, yeah, si no, está bien, está bien. Finally, everything, he, he bought it. And he just, like, I seen him. He just took that step back and just looked at the truck. And I was like, hey, you did it. I was like, look, look what you did. I think my dad turns, he's about to turn 61 next year. And I was like, look, 59, 59 years of work. Look at this. Yeah, you yeah. finally bought it. Yeah. You did it. The Lanya. The Lanya. And, and my dad usually never likes to travel. All of a sudden, oh, we're going to go visit your, your aunt in San Francisco. We're going to go with our friends to Modesto. And I was like, you're going to take the work truck? Pa' qué? Compré la troca. And I'm like. Yeah. So my mom's like, all of a sudden, he travels. I'm like, hey. 
But it's like so many years, man. So many years of work and giving to others, to the kids, to the family. You know, to finally see our parents, you know, live yeah. a little, live a stress-free life. And we are talking about that last time where nosotros, I, I can't say we have a hard life because what they went through was oh, totally, oh, totally different. This is nothing compared to what, what, they, what, mm-hmm. what they went through. Yeah. You know, my dad, I don't know, crossing the border, you know, having the same clothes for months, you know, working three jobs yeah. to provide for us. You know, yeah. No comparison. We, we, I got a head start. You know, what well, he gave me a head start. He gave me a boost. Yeah. You know, and me failing is failing him. Yep. You know, and I'm not going to fail him <laughs> at all, you know. And me giving back, saying how they say that you got to buy a car. You got to buy nice stuff. You got to, you know, like he said, man, I never traveled. He didn't believe in traveling. <laughs> took, okay. I took him to Tulum. <laughs> took him to Tulum. I yeah. partied. We partied. We went to uh, Isla Mujeres, to, to the ocean. We Jeez. He had the most fun ever. I remember when I took, I told my dad, I said, ¿Qué hago, mijo? I said, you got to get your swimming clothes. He took scooby diving shit, all kinds of crap, <laughs> like flippers. I'm like, oh, not going to ask the stream. But I told him, take money, take cash, you know, take a lot of, to tip the people over there because you have to help the people over there. Dude, my dad was tipping like crazy. <laughs> I remember we were at the resort. The resort doesn't open like the kitchen at 7. Yeah. When I was there at 6.30, and the resort opened, was, everything's closed. You see one man. In the middle of the restaurant. For him. <laughs> for him. And there's like he, three, how you got it. And there's three you know four servers it. around him. Coffee. He already had breakfast. That's how you know you got You're it. waking up. You're like, Yo, ya he already fucking ate. Because he was passing out 50s. <laughs> dollar bills. <laughs> and I was at $50 dollar bills. And, was in the, and everybody's outside waiting. And my dad's in there by himself. With like four or five servers. Talking about Mexico. Talking about, you know. Even about life and about how he used to work as a server and all yeah. that stuff. And he just, and everybody, yeah, yeah, tatelo. And right there. How did it feel to see your dad enjoy life? Oh, man. Blessing, bro. Yeah. It's amazing. It's the best feeling ever. It's like winning the Super Bowl. You know, it's like the feeling that no one else, when you get to that level to help provide for your, your, your parents, yeah. it's like a different level of happiness. You know, and sometimes you don't see it because sometimes we're always busy. Yeah. Our minds are always like, oh, yeah. fuck, I got to do this, do that. Yeah. Right? You step back. I always step back. Like, damn, man, I just bought an S class. Dude, man, I bought a Mercedes S class. I remember him driving it, pulling up right here, all, all like, with his chest out, like all excited, yeah. with his t- shirt tucked in, his <laughs> shoes. I'm like, damn, fuck, dude, that's that's my dad. And he, you know, fucking a, you know. And I'm like, dude, I'm proud. That's my father. It's my guy. It's my that's my guy right there. You know what I mean? So it's a blessing. He sounds like a great man. He sounds like he was a great man. So much success, so much drive. With all of this, I have to ask, do you ever experience any burnout? Or do you ever get tired? Tired? No. Well, you know, I think we're always tired. You always say, oh, man, I'm tired. You know what I mean? But it's always like we're moving fast, too, at the same time. But if you like what you're doing, that's always how you, you know, it's fun. You know, it's fun. You know, it's always, I see it like, hey, you know what? It's always, there's always going to be risks. There's always going to be too much work, you know. I'm telling you, I just got here. I woke up, I yeah. went to bed at 3.30. Yeah. You know, I woke up at 5, 5.30 to be here with you guys. And do I look tired? No. No, look, um, no cameras are good, bro. Cameras <laughs> are good. <laughs> you got good lighting. You got good lighting. <laughs> do I look tired? Do I look mad? No. no not I'm not at all. You know, I'm like, dude, fuck, I love what I do. So do you think for an entrepreneur, there's a there's a certain mindset you need to have? And oh, if so, yes. what is it? Yes. What's like top three things as an entrepreneur that you need to have? A vision. You got to have a vision and you got to be disciplined like crazy. And you got to have passion. And you got to be focused and not hear the noise because people are going to talk shit. People are going to put you down. You're going to fail. Yeah. You're going to fall down and fall. People are going to throw dirt at you. And you're still going to get up and move forward. That's how I see it. You're going to fail and fail moving forward. That's how I see it. You know, we're always going to fail. There's always going to be shit going on. There's always going to be people talking crap. There's always going to be a competitor trying to be, you know, out, outdo you, you know. Yeah. But who wants it more? I'll tell you one thing. I'm not bragging, but I fucking want it more. No one's going to outshine me. Yeah. You know, this is phase one. You guys mm-hmm. got to see my other stories. There's like a different tier of levels. I'm just bringing it, bringing it to people. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's, it's amazing. So man. what was that? What's that difference between making a couple hundred thousand dollars to making the first million? <laughs> Tell you the truth. It's like, uh, my mind, I'm like, sometimes I got to pinch myself. I was like, dude, pinch yourself. Like, what the fuck, dude, Ruben, you're good. Dude, look at it. I have, you know, I'm blessed. 
I have a commercial property I bought for $1.9 million. Great location. You know, I have two investment homes and I have my home that's almost paid off. My home, I know I'm not trying to brag, but my house mm-hmm. is worth almost like $1.8 million. Rock, pool, slide. I remember my daughter and my dad were like, hey, how, how, the pool guys, how big do you want your slide? Right? And I was like, oh, like 15 feet. And my daughter was like, no, puppy, you got to do it bigger. <laughs> I'm like, well, what do you want? You know, because you work for your kids. I'm like, Mijo, whatever you yeah. want. Yeah. Yeah. I, I told the guy, el viejo, mi hija la quiero más grande. I think we went like 50 feet. God. Freaking, oh, like, my God. It's like freaking, is, is this uh, reaching waters? Reaching I know. Water. <laughs> <laughs> and I did it for my, I said, like, you know, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a blessing. You know, sometimes I got to pitch myself, you know, Ruben, you know, because you're, st- I'm driven, you know, and I don't want to let go. I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop. These people say, oh, I want to retire. I'm going to retire. I'm having fun. It's fun now. It's to the point where, like, you know, I enjoy what I'm doing, you know. But sometimes I know I got to step back and say, okay, Ruben, shh, like, take a breather. So I feel like as a go for it, go for it. Yeah, you sound like you have a great question. No, it's just uh, ask away, Pepe. How do you, Pepe. How do you balance work life? Work life. Yeah. Work life. I, I know. Mean, as a parent, yeah. that's that must be hard, right? That's very hard. You yeah. Have children. And is there yeah. anything and that you do in particular for yourself? For myself? Yeah. For myself, what do I like? I buy a lot of shoes. That's one thing <laughs> I, I always have a box and of shoes okay. coming to my house. You know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, um, balance. Balance is it's hard. But yeah, I try to take my kids, you know, like vacations and and do one on ones. Like I have a, have a daughter. It's she's nine. Dude, she talks a storm. So she's amazing. She, she <laughs> makes me breakfast in the morning. Not breakfast, but she made my little lunch pals. Yeah. You know, it's pretty yeah. cool. Like little says, Daddy. Oh. That shit breaks my heart. Like always, you know, like shit. So I have my mom, my daddy, my my dates with my daughter, uh, my son. We go to football games. You know, fortunately we're Raider fans, but. But wait, Cut the spine. cameras, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Luke, you did not tell me this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> We're Raider fans, but it's you know it's the I tell my son, hey, bro, it's not what you know you're not always gonna win. It's part of life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like shit. I, 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 I'm, I'm used to this shit. Right? 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 This is where like th- this is the delusional. I'm a Cowboy fan, and I say every year we're gonna do it. This year is our year, and then we get to the postseason, and oh, it's a disappointment. Oh. <laughs> it's triste, bro. It's triste. But then the, we're the, used to this shit, so I don't. I'm not worried really? about. I'm not worried. About, you're worse because you you oh. think you think you're gonna have it. Me, I'm like, we're not gonna make playoffs. No, no, no. We, <laughs> we just we just like, paid we just paid Dak. We paid Dak. He he's ready to win. He's ready to win. You paid him twice. <laughs> it's not gonna work. No, but you see, this is where I tell people. I'm like, if you're a sports fan, you know, you see your favorite team may not be the winning team, but you're like, every year you have hope. Yeah, hope. I hope we're going to win. I hope we make yeah, it. I tell my son, hey, before we die, before I die, all I want him is to win one Super Bowl. And my, my son looks at me like, really, dad? I'm like, fuck, I'm hoping. Hey, <laughs> se vale soñar. Yeah. She said, well, you know, you never know. You if know? I die before, make sure you just, you come and you tell me that we want yeah. or not. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but that's my disconnect mm. is, you know, of course, you know, I have sports, you know, it's, you disconnect your kids. Yeah. And I try to, as much as possible, spend time with them. So I'm not an alcoholic. I don't, I don't, I don't have like a, I'm not, I don't go gamble. I don't do nothing. It's like work, the gym, work and home. Yeah. What kids. do you, what do you think it's your, your best, but your worst trait about yourself? Me? Yeah. Worst trait? Your best, but it's your worst trait. Best, I know how to make good food. The worst is I fucking eat like crazy. <laughs> I don't stop eating. <laughs> and I love food, you know. Uh, and sometimes, you know, I don't know. It's worst trade. That's a crazy question. That's a good question, though. That's a good question. But I you know, because know, like you know, kind of like to help you out here, like some of our our best but worst trade is that we're always hungry. We always want more. Yeah. We're we're never satisfied. We will, like we can have an amazing contract right now. We finished. But come Monday, we're okay, like, okay, okay. Yeah. Now, now let me let me rephrase. Mm-hmm. Let me go back to that question. Best and worst trade. Yes. I can open restaurants. Now, I can build them. I can. I know how to structure them. I know how to operate them. I'm getting to the point where I know how to do it. I think the worst part of it is that I go. I, now I want to move too fast, where I got to slow down sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes people tell me, "Hey, Ruben, I'm going too fast," and I, I think I'm not moving too fast, and I think I can do more, and I put a lot of pressure on me. Put a lot of fucking stress on myself. Yeah, no one's ever gonna see it, but I know mm-hmm. know it because I come with a smile on my face, and because my, my my employees, my circle go, hey, jefe, cuando abrí otro y cuando está este en este, dude, I already signed for two more restaurants in LA, uh, Topanga Mall, 
Topanga Mom, right? It's where there's a loop. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, you know yeah. how cool that is, dude? Like, yeah, I need fun with them. I'm like, fuck it, I'm bougie, too. My son was like, my son was like, I'm going to work there. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> no, you're not going to work there. Yo, my son's bougie, not. too. <laughs> you know, I'm opening there. I just sign, and it's like pressure, and I got to do all this shit. And I got to I gotta start dedicating and start structuring, like, a system for everybody to do their part, you know? And I, sometimes I move too fast, and I don't structure things right, you know? But I'm, open, I'm opening there and Northridge Fashion Mall, too, so... Mm. Yeah, on the move. On the move. And something like that. But you know what? I've, I'll fi- always figure it out. I got to come up with like, I got to come up with like $3 million. I don't got $3 million, but I'll figure it out. It'll, figure it'll, come, it out. it'll come to me, you know, but that's the way I am. I'm a go-getter like crazy. It's that were mindset. you always that way when you were younger? Always. Did you imagine yourself in this space as an entrepreneur with so many restaurants? I always told myself, you know, why did it become successful? You know, you, the way I had it is a different style of restaurants and it didn't work. Mm. And it shifted, it sh- and it and it took me to try that style to fail because mm-hmm. I failed so bad that I said I had to try something else, you know. And now I see a different vision. I'm like, okay, now, yes, I see it. Now it's a different, different vision of. So giving uh, up was never an option. No, oh no, it's never giving up. People say I failed. I give up. Like I'm done. I'm moving on to the next. And thing. then they tell you a good story about how they tried and yeah, how they did it. And oh, I used to do. Yeah, yeah. You know, back uh, yeah, then. I, I also owned a restaurant. Yeah. I'm you about the back then, I owned ten restaurants. Yeah. yeah. I hear. I hear it all the time. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, I used to own a restaurant and I closed it down. It's like shit. I, I should never close it down. Like, no, no, it's just, eso, no, eso no trabaja, mijo. <laughs> I don't know about uh, that. Well, I don't, well, I don't know Twitter. about it if it doesn't work. And I think I have not the best, but the most profitable margin restaurant in the industry because I have the dinner experience. I have the nightclub restaurant combination where people spend more. So my margins are higher in profits. That's awesome. And I think I just hit, I hit it, you know, mm. and all, all I got to do, and it's hard, not easy. People try to, I'm not trying to, people try to copy me. I see it everywhere. Now they're, you know, that, like, Oh, I'm going to do it. Like I'm Eva. And I take my employees, like the, the ones that leave, ones like, I get rid of, you know, I don't fire my people for, cause they're bad. They quit. <laughs> cause you know, but they leave and they, Oh, I used to work yeah. at Amipa and they hire them. I'm like, Oh my God, this fool knows. We're going to get all the secrets. All the secrets. Uh, <laughs> it's not that, that easy. Not oh, that yeah. Yeah. It's not that easy. No. It's not that easy. I have, you know, you can have the most money in the world and open a restaurant and you will still fail. It's not mm. about the money. It's oh. about the passion and the heart for the business. And you got to know everything. And I know the kitchen. I know how to wash dishes. I know how to prep. I know how to peel shrimp. I know how to cook. I know how to serve. I know how to bartend and manage. But I operate as good. You know, the back of the books, we're learning. But <laughs> all the other things. Yeah. And I know how to have fun. And I know what people are looking for. People can replicate it, but never duplicate it. That's correct. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, that's one thing. I, you, can, you can go and take everything that we did. Go put it over there. You're not going to be us. No. It's, gonna be the same. it's not going to be yeah. the same. Like You're going to have similar themes, similar content, whatever the case is, but you cannot duplicate who we are. Yeah. Everybody in this room is special for what they do and what they bring. No matter how much you try, it can uh, respectfully, no, right. it's just not going to be it. No. You, ha- you have to bring your own twist. Like, I love the restaurant. I love it, the vibe. If I want to go open, I'm going to take ideas, but you got to add your own, yes. your own spunk to your own passion, your own yeah. flavor. But again, it all depends on the leader. If yes. the leader... Isn't isn't ready for that seat? What's what's gonna happen? You're gonna close. So that's why restaurants, that's why bars, that's why so many things close down because the team is not ready. Like mm-hmm. the leader's not ready. If I can get a million dollars today, and if I don't know how to maintain it and use it, it's gonna go gone. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> Half a million, I'm black. I'm not a gambler either, bro. I'm <laughs> I got no money to gamble, so we're really gonna keep it. Really keep it to the very minimum, but. You know, it, it's it's the mentality of, of a leader. The mentality, if you're ready for, uh, for what it's it's about to come. And I'm a big person on, on the higher power, and it's I know he's preparing me for what's to come. And back then, if I had this now, then <laughs> we probably wouldn't be here. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why we we go through the trials and tribulations. We go through the hard moments. You know, you brought up that a month before, uh, you know, your father passed away. Well, in the same month that I started episode one of the podcast, my grandfather passed away. So it's the same thing. Like, what do I do next week? I'm going to go to the burial and sit here in silence, be depressed and not do anything or go at it. Yeah. Let's do it right now. And I've since then, I'm like, I did a podcast in the same week that we went to go bury my grandfather. There's no way I'm stopping. I did it. And I put on a smile. I put a put on all the energy. 
You think you think because I'm tired, I'm not gonna save that for somebody else. Yeah. Not me. You may be tired. You may not wake up. We're ready. We're rocking. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like if we have everybody on this team, everybody that we've grown to be with, it's we all have the mentality of no matter what we do the day before, tomorrow we have something. Let's go and show up and show out. Yeah, correct. Después de ahí, we can go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, después we could take a nap. For a little bit, though. For a little bit. Just a little okay. bit. Hey, sometimes when I go to bed, I tell myself, do I deserve to go to bed? That's, I'm crazy. Do I deserve my sleep? <laughs> you ask yourself that. Yes. Because yeah. you know what? Did what I do? F- did I accomplish something did today? <laughs> That's how I'm fucking crazy in a way. You know what I mean? Because did I deserve to go to sleep? You know? And do I? did I win today? Did I accomplish mm. something today? I always tell myself that when I lay in bed, and I have a fucking badass bed, trust me, I should <laughs> wait. It's like, I go to bed quick. I have a badass bed. It goes up and down, and it fucking sinks you in on shit. But, like, I always tell myself before I go to bed, do I deserve I to go to bed right now? Yeah. Did I win? Did I win today? Yeah, yeah. And lately, God, thank God, you know, God, you know, I've been winning, you know, and I'm going to keep winning. Oh, yeah. and win every day, brother. That's, that's the thing. Win your daily battles. It's a, it's a it's a it's a battle every every day. Yeah, stack up the small wins yeah. and that big one's coming. Big ass smile on your face and oh. move forward, right? Fuck is yeah. there like a quote or anything that is engraved in your mind that you tell yourself to keep yourself? No motivated? pasa nada, like you said earlier. <laughs> and you know whose quote that was? Yeah. 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 Yes. No pasa nada. That's awesome. You're here. Yeah. You're live. You can walk. You can talk. No pasa nada. Keep moving. It's so simple, but it's so true. Yeah. Really just so all my restaurants, they have it in front of the DJ booth. No pasa nada. You know what's crazy? My dad gave me the idea of the music, of the, the, have the loudest, but most balanced surround sound. Literally. Que escuche recio, que escuche bien. Que retume la banda. Straight up. <laughs> Everywhere here is a sule todo. And says, está bien. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's just Bakersfield. I spent over 150 grand on my surround sound. But it's so fucking balanced. God damn. It, uh, it's, it sounds, fuck, dude, like you're at a concert. You know, and yeah, yesterday I had, I don't know, four or five hundred people. You know, it was so full and everybody's having an amazing time. Like, man, hell yeah. We could probably put up in the truck with the tacos in the back of it outside. We can hear the music. Yeah. Oh, you could, bro. Yeah. You could. Yeah. You could. Yeah. Just in case yeah. we can't make it in. You know, just in case we can't make it in. Good. Man. Pero no pasa nada. No pasa nada. nada. No pasa nada. No, pasa nada yeah. no matter what happens in the world, no pasa nada. No pasa nada. Shit. That's my dad's word, yeah. So you think su- success, it's a, it, it's enough to have a lot of people or does it become lonely throughout the journey? Lonely. You're going to be so lonely. You, sometimes you ask yourself, like, what am I doing? And what am I doing it for and why? You know, the what, why, where, why, when, you know, that question. Especially the why, but you're lonely. Yeah. You know, there's you no one, there's, it? tell me again. Mike, do you think it's worth it? Do you think being success is worth being lonely? It's only, it's only worth it if you follow through and you do what you're going to do. If you quit and it's not worth it, right? If, if you go through every, the pain and you keep going through it and you go to the finish line, I think I don't have a finish line because I'm going to keep going, <laughs> you know, because I like yeah. what I do. It's going to be worth it and it is worth it. You know, I like seeing, you know, do my, my payroll checks, you know, for my employees, you know, every every two weeks is almost what, 250 grand and I can pay it and it feels good to pay checks. You know, yeah. hey, I can, I'm feeding 300 people, yeah. you know, and especially my little circle that, that are in the journey with me and they look up to me and all that stuff, you know, I could provide for them and their family, you know, and my goal is how can I help them more? Yeah. And if that's the best feeling ever too, is how to help people. It's not about just ourselves, and especially for myself. Like, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm working my ass off to make more money for me. Right. No, well, of course, yeah, you do want to make money, right? I think the big, be- the bigger, the bigger flex is helping the people that are helping you get there, and that's gonna make your life easier. And that's mm-hmm. what I'm doing now is helping the, my little circle to become more successful and be and have more more for them and their families. Yeah. And you know what happens? They work their ass off even more, and they know it's they know. They see it too. They feel valued as employees. They feel val- and they feel yeah. valued. You know that my everything runs. The system is running. It's not perfect, one hundred percent. I can tell you, but it runs. I'm not fucking stressed out in the morning. I, I get I get the opportunity to go to the gym. I get the opportunity to take my kids to school. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's already by three in the morning. The system's already going. Mm-hmm. Hey. You know. Yeah. And you have these my little circle always calling me and checking up on me because, jefe, cómo está? ¿Dónde anda? <laughs> <laughs> Vengase. You know, and it feels yeah. good. And I it's look, like a hey, family. Me, me yeah. I have a guy named Leo, a little guy. His mom just passed away. 
fucking good employee, alcoholic too. He has his bads. His mom passed away last week. Mm. And he was there for me when I passed away. And I remember he was calling me every day, going to my house every day. And just, he saw me, he saw me. And I had to be with him. And you know what's crazy? My little circle, my little heifer group, were all with him. He don't have his, his mom passed away in Mexico. couldn't see him. Couldn't see her mom. Imagine that. That's hard. Yeah. Like, we're blessed yeah. that we were here with our parents yeah. to see him, to bury my, my father. He was, wasn't here. And he didn't have a sister or brother or anything here. It was just him by himself. You know, and he had no, like, family support. Yeah. He had all kinds of family support, right? You had family support. Yeah. You know, we didn't have family support. Mm-hmm. And he had nothing. His family support was you. me. Risk. And on my little circle, my, my group, on his ass. He drank one day. He fell on, he fell on, he's an alcoholic, so he don't drink, so he f- drank one day hard. And no one told me. I'm like, dude, why didn't you tell me? But they, they don't like telling me because I get depressed and I try to shape it, get him back, you know? Mm-hmm. He's a great employee. But I remember he went on his own. Like, they dropped him off. He did suero, went to the hospital, like cleaned the system up, took all the, all the tequila he drank, I don't know what, everything, and cleaned him out. And the next day, jefe, I don't know, bien, back. And it took about a week or two, but that's my little circle. See how we work? And it's like, it works on its own. And building something badass, and that's why I do what I do. I love doing that. I love it. Do you feel like you take on? You're the type of person that takes on everybody else's emotions. Yes. And you you take it upon yourself to try to fix everybody. Everybody. I have like everybody's psychologist. I'm everybody's father. I'm like a broker for everybody. Like I'm. I, I, everybody goes to me. You know, calls me because hey, yeah, I'm like a day, yeah, and this person, this person. You know, but I know I'm so good at it. I can balance it all. Mm-hmm. You know, yesterday we had a problem. Ah, se fue. Javi, he, Javi left at twelve. And he didn't clean the bag. He didn't tell him. But I know what Javi went through. Javi worked his ass off. He did a good job. And I tell the other guy, hey, bro, it's good. Don't worry about it. I don't talk about my employees. One thing I do, you'll never hear me talk bad about my employees. I don't like when people talk bad about my employees. Because that's my employees. I hired them. I have their back 100%. Mm. So I always try to balance them. Because there's always going to be like, oh, this person did more than I did more than them. You'll see those like those TikToks where the restaurant guys at night they clean their ass already clean the restaurant, yeah. Yeah. and the next day, someone yeah. goes with a finger and it gets a little dust, <laughs> and that's real. I yeah. used to work fast food, so I yeah, know I that. get that shit every yeah. every week. No limpia, no hacen esto, no hacen nada. No nada. Sí. And, but I know what they go through. Only I know. Yeah. So I don't go yelling at them. I'm like, no, it's, it's all good. Just a little water on that fire, <sighs> calm it down. You yeah, mentioned, hey, yeah. Yeah. and they keep it going smooth. If I start a fire there, start a fire there, and what happens is a big fire. It all burns. But it's, that's something I'm really good at. And I have a good team, and it's like running to flow, and, I'm, and that's why I do what I do, and I want to grow because I want to make other people grow with me. I want them to own restaurants too. I want them to make more money, not just myself, them. Mm-hmm. You know? And that's why they're hungry because they yeah. don't have the opportunity. You know? And they're all like, you know, like they're all there, and they're all yeah. support, and they all have their opinions, and, and they're all on the journey with me. And I'm blessed to have them all. Yeah. You know? Your father te implemented and, and showed you a way to life of and now you are who you are. What's what is a lesson you're trying to pass down to your own kids? My own kids? Yeah. My own kids. Lesson I would what I tell my son all the time. Life's not easy, right? But to always like Understand there's some, some certain situations that you can't control in your head. You can't control, but don't mess up your mind. Just let everything run its course, yeah. right? And to be disciplined in what to day-to-day make friends. Don't talk about people. Always never talk about people. You know, if people are going to talk about you, whatever, make most friends as possible. Make, don't talk about people. Be positive. Be disciplined. You know, and have passion what he does. You know, no matter what he does, my son, whatever. He wants to work with me. I told him, hey, <laughs> check this out. My son said, I dad, I'm not, I want to go to college. I told him, hey, you can go to U- USC. I took him to USC game. You know, I seen the tailgates and the parties they do. My dad could be you, kid. And play soccer. He's a good soccer player. I do. I'll pay for your college, bro. You got it. I said, no, I want to work for you. But I tell my son one thing, hey, bro, this is my restaurant. This is my house. This is my cars. This is, everything I have is mine. You work for your own shit. And it's not going to be an easy road. My son comes here and he, he, he washes dishes. He hates it. But he has to wash dishes. But now he's loving it. He works the kitchen. And he does a fucking great job. He's in the kitchen. He's working in the back. Yeah. He said it take him like 10 years before he gets to the front. 
and he's going to work his ass off over there. He's going to smell like cebolla. He's going to smell like carne frijoles. <laughs> he's going to gain a little weight because <laughs> he's in the back of the kitchen. You're going to try food like crazy. I said, you're going to go through all this shit. I says, get this shit straight. This is my business. I says, it's not yours. I says, this is, this is you're going to do your own. I'm gonna say, luckily you have the support. Like my dad had my support, my yeah. father. Yeah. Same thing for you, son. Same thing. Yeah. I'm sure he'll be thankful for it one day. Yeah. Oh, I all tell the- him all the time. He gets mad at me. You're at school, like, damn, he's always frustrated. I say, hey, son, I love you. But when you get older, okay. one day you're gonna be like, damn, thank you. Yeah. For a re- it's just, he was right. Thank you. But yeah. he's not gonna, right now I'm not, I'm, I'm on his ass. You know, yesterday, hey, Dad, I want to go with my uh, friends to the football game. Can I borrow the car? Like, oh, you're 15. You don't have a license. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. You know, but further in life right now, they're, it's like that's another challenge I have is maintaining a teenager, you know, being with a teenager and disciplining them and giving them the best road and choosing the best friends, you know. Yeah. That's another job, right? And I have to be a great leader and a good father there, you know. Present. But, yeah, but my, it's, it's, it's another challenge, but. I'm on every day, and I told him within within time you will understand to appreciate all the shit I give you, all yeah. the stress I give you, and I wake you up in the morning early. You're gonna appreciate it later on. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Right. Before we go, is there any piece of advice you would give anybody that's trying to start their own business? Any piece of advice? Any piece of advice? For the up okay. and coming For the entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs. Yeah. What could it be? First advice. If you don't have patience, don't do it. Don't do it at all. See, I have a lot of patience. Best advice, don't quit. And learn how to fail forward. That's how I taught myself. Learn how to fail because you're going to fail a thousand. You're going to fail more than you win. You know, but make those wins big. Mm -hmm. But you're going to fail a lot. And make sure you have a lot of, a lot of, you can keep your emotions calm and not overreact because sometimes there's things that are going to hit you you know like hit you bad trains gonna hit you so bad that you're gonna you have to come to work the work environment to your employees with a smile on your face because you can't because yeah. the law of attraction for me is important you got to give that great energy towards your employees mm-hmm. you come with a bad attitude they're gonna have a bad mm-hmm. attitude you come with a great attitude they're gonna have a great attitude yeah. so it depends on that too you know you gotta control your emotions and learn how to learn how to fail forward that's what i think Oh. That's so motivating. So inspiring. Let's go open a restaurant, guys. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Man. do it, bro. <laughs> Let's manage your emotions first. Bro. I know. For real. Honestly, um, you know, I think it's it's been an amazing podcast, to say the least. Yeah. And your storyline and everything you had to in- endure at the beginning of this journey of Ivy Pla is insane. Someone that, that can go through that type of adversity, that type of pain, that type of, of storm right before one of the biggest moments of their life there's there's nothing that there's nothing that can bring you down or take you down because you already lived through the worst that is. there's nothing that i feel like there's nothing worse than seeing the love one of your mentors the love of your life like you know go in there um honestly the last one of the last questions i have the last question i have is that last day bro like that your dad like what do you think your dad would have told you you had if you were able to have those moments. I can't do that. <clears throat> That's one thing. Um, uh, that's one thing that I miss, or I should that a lot of people have the opportunity. You know, there's oh my your dad's gonna pass away, you know, he's sick in bed. And to have that last conversation, I never had that. <clears throat> last time I seen my father was here. He picked up my son. Because I worked late. And we lived close. You know? Um, so I could, I still see him. Pick up my son. Pick up my son here and leave. That's the time I seen him. You know? So I went to a vacation. You know, and... And I didn't have opportunity to be at his, you know, when he got, when he passed away. Um, but one thing that I would tell my father, or my father would have told me, you know, and I know it too, and he tells me every day. Tú échale, mijo. Tú no pares lo que estás haciendo. 
tú sigue la vida y te le ganas. Y always tell me that shit. In the bad and the good, always. He had, always had good words, you know, my dad, my father. And those words are also like really organic words, so words that he went through in life that no one else can tell you but him. Like your grandpa, right? Your grandpa could tell you something right now and you'd be like, your, your ears open like, damn, yeah. your grandpa talking to me because you know what he went through. So was it tough for my dad, for me leaving my father? Extremely tough. He's my best friend. You know, my dad was right-hand man. He kept me at my toes. He made me who I am today. He made me disciplined. He made me mind strong the way I am right now. You know, he made me, well, try, we had a shot to eat, but I, he, he didn't want me to drink because he, he was a sober person. Yeah. But I wish I could have told my dad too, you know, gracias por todo. You know, buen hombre. Y nunca lo voy a fallar. And I still tell him that now, and he does hear me. I'm never going to fail that now, ever. You'll see. He knows. I'm sure he'd be very proud. Yeah, nah. It's, I'm sure everybody around you can say you're a, great, you're a great person, you're a great father, you're a great leader. And everybody that gets to see you through the, through the, the podcast and gets to meet you when they come at the restaurant and see you is, I want to be like that guy one day. And the, cool, the cool part is when you people, I have my menu, I have the story. Because people ask. Mm. The story about I, me, pa, me and my father. It's cool. Like yesterday, they tell me like, hey, I read your story. I says, you had a great father. You're a great person. You know what I mean? I like I hear it all the time. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Like, that's like, okay, mm-hmm. good. Give him a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Bring him the bottle. Bring the bottle. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, but it feels good. You know, that's like that's a good accomplishment. Because you know what? It's, I'm really, like, I didn't prepare for this. You know, mm-hmm. it's natural. Yeah. Nothing to lie about. This is right. what it is. It's natural. Natural as it's going to be. And realist. You know, not cutting corners. What it is, you know. But that's where my father was. Yeah. Your grandpa's probably the same way. Anything, he is what he was that's it you know and I want to thank my father and I like I tell you guys now this is not the end of I Me Pa it's only the beginning it's something amazing we do a podcast 10 years from now and you're going to say fuck dude remember that podcast we did 10 years ago yeah. look at you now you know because I'm not going to fail if I'm healthy and I'm good nothing happens to me and everything, all all the end there's nothing stopping me yeah. I'm, a, I'm a crazy person brothers in mind of growth and how to be, I want to be successful and creating the best Mexican ambiance restaurant anybody ever been to. No pasa nada. I mean, everybody listening in every state, every city, <laughs> look out for Ami Pa because hey, it's probably going to come to a place near you. Man. Yeah, it's coming to, oh yeah, it's coming. Trust me, I have it's. They're like coming after me. That's, hey, you know? I'm, that's just, awesome. I'm just building this team even stronger, and it's, we're going to push. Oh, we're building the, the Lakers, you know what I mean, with LeBron James and all these people. The championship Lakers, right? Ah, yeah, okay, okay. okay. And, I'm like, I'm like, and I'm like Phil Jackson, and then I have my team, and then we're going to just push. That's the way I see it. And I would put it like a Miami when LeBron, Dwayne Wade, Chris <laughs> Bosh was there. <laughs> we just beat up. We brought all the big dogs together. <laughs> but, idea. man, Ruben, thank you for – you know, making the time for us to come and sit at, at your restaurant here in Riverside for not not sleeping enough and still making it out and bringing the energy and bringing the vibes and, again, sharing a little piece of your story. Like, hey, I appreciate you guys. Um, you and I think it, it, it's worth it. Mm-hmm. I, I'll always love telling my dad's story and my story about how, it, how, how I went through and what I'm going through. You know, yeah. awesome. a lot of people always want to ask and find out, you know, and yeah. hopefully, hopefully people out there can listen to what I said. And if you're a restaurant owner, you know, and I always try to help people. People always say, hey, give me advice. I says, come meet me. Mm-hmm. And I, I tell them, do you want me to hear they tell you the truth? <laughs> always. Or you want me to tell you a lie? Yeah. And I always tell people, hey, I'm opening a restaurant. I'm doing this. You want me to tell you the truth or lie? What do you, what do you always want to hear? Mm-hmm. Well, I have a restaurant. What do you think? I'm going to tell you things, but it's sometimes it's sometimes going to hurt your feelings. Right. But it's the way it is. Yeah. You know, people want to hear like, oh, how can I just. How can how I make, make the million dollars? Million dollars. Yeah, I put in my bank account tomorrow. Like, hey, it's. Yeah. Wake up, with, make, wake up every day at 4 or 5.30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. Don't count your hours. You don't work eight hours. You don't have a schedule. You just seven days a week mm-hmm. until you say, oh, fuck, I need to go. I forgot to eat today. Yeah. <laughs> fuck, I need to eat. Yeah. Or fuck, I forgot. Fuck, I gotta go pick up my son from school. My son's, fuck, I didn't answer his phone call. <laughs> and my son's outside. I got to get him an Uber. You know, it's, <laughs> it's the way it is. 
I didn't go to my son's soccer game. Why don't I go to my daughter's volleyball game? Yeah. And he said, Dad, why didn't you go? I said, Mija, I'm very sorry. And you know what's crazy? My kids understand. And I'm, ble- I'm really thankful that my, my kids understand that I'm busy. So they don't throw it in my face. They just, Mijo, Dad, but you can go next time, right, puppy? I'm like, yeah, for sure. You know, and I always, okay. And I tell yeah. my I have a secretary that you got to tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Call me and remind me I get right. the fuck out of here. Because yeah. I can be here all day. You know, I, can, I love being here, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you, man. It's a blessing with you guys being here. And I, I feel honored. You know, really Thank honored you, to be bro. here with you guys. And keep doing what you're doing. I think you're doing an amazing job. Like you said. Great job, all you guys. In you know? 10 years, we're going we're gonna to be in a whole different world. Don't be a quitter and keep pushing what you're doing, brother. Aquí, aquí no lo rajamos. No. Sangre michoacana, no. sangre de dónde? Michoacana y Zacatecas. Y Zacatecas. Zacatecas. Sí. Yeah. Y Zacatecas también. ¿De qué parte? Uh, de ¿Eres Yenet? de paisano? De paisano. <risa> ¿De qué parte de Primo. Zacatecas? Primo. Mis papás son de un rancho de San José de Yenetes, de Calera y Fresnillo, right in the middle. No way. Yeah. My family's from Jerez. Jerez. Okay. Sí. I knew I lied. Pour up the shots, bro. Pour up the shots. Cayó bien, cayó bien con razón. Sí. Bueno, sangre mexicana. Corre por las venas. Sí, sí, Son, sí, el sí. peruano ayer me dijo, Isaac, tienes la sangre mexicana corriendo por tus venas. Claro. Por eso no lo rajamos. ¿Es la mejor? I had a drink here called el Zacatecano. Oh, really? Yeah. I guess. They gotta bring What it can back. I say? What can I say? <laughs> New Horror of the Podcast, baby. No pasa nada. <laughs> no pasa <laughs> nada. Make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you guys share. I'll see you guys on the next one, baby. Let's go. Chao, chao.